But don't worry, I won't be looking away or getting distracted anytime soon. And, and, and what struck me last night as absolutely riveting was the way that a Daily Telegraph columnist tweeted, early doors, oh, there's lots of clapping and slamming of desks coming from the room where Liz Truss is having her meeting with the 1922. And you do a double take at something like that. You do a double take at almost everything in some corners of the Daily Telegraph at the moment. They're carrying a, co a column at the moment suggesting that blackouts will be good for us because it might snap some young people out of their uh, smug complacency. At least I think that was a real headline. It's so hard to tell. And, and, and you read that idea that they're cheering her. I watched PMQs. Why would they cheer her in private but not cheer her in public? The place where she really needs support is in the House of Commons. Do you know what the Labour MPs yesterday were cheering or chanting as Liz Truss left the chamber? I'll tell you, they were shouting, more, more, encore, encore, more. The Labour MPs calling for more from a sitting Conservative Prime Minister. So I read this tweet and I thought, well, something's gone a bit right. And then I read another one. A bit later, when the MPs had started filing out and giving off the record briefings, or in some cases on the record briefings, to journalists, friendly or otherwise. And what was reported then was that the banging of the desks and the jeering or cheering was coming when she was being asked deeply critical questions by her own MPs. So, in fact, it was the dissenters. It was the hecklers. It was the critics that were getting cheered and banging of desks, something that the Daily Telegraph correspondent either um, failed to mention or didn't understand. And that's frankly incredible. That puts us in a position where honest newspapers who haven't spent the last six years selling you Brexit, selling you Theresa May, selling you Boris Johnson, selling you Liz Truss, selling you the, um, uh, the, 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 the opinions of whoever it is that actually pays these think tanks that have exerted a stranglehold upon many corners of the media and, and politics. So the newspapers that can actually tell you the truth are going with headlines like this. Tories in open revolt against Prime Minister. That's the I newspaper. Um, Rip up your tax plans. Top officials urge trust, says the Times, which always manages to ride both horses because it can do the, the, the kind of treating readers like complete idiots in its sister title, The Sun, while people who buy The Times um, won't fall for that sort of propaganda and obnoxiousness. The Daily Mirror, uh, you turn or you go. Liz Truss was last night urged to ditch her unfunded tax cuts to prevent an economic disaster. And crucially, if you're thinking, oh, well, that is the Daily Mirror, crucially, the second paragraph tells us even senior Tories demanded she U-turn on her vow. And they've spoken to the papers. They've said either she gets rid of her tax cuts or it will be her who is gone. This is up there for me with the poll tax. This is falling apart in a way that major policy platforms in a functioning democracy are simply not supposed to fall apart. Margaret Thatcher at the time of the poll tax was high on years of electoral success. She was almost un, uh, unlatched from reality, unlatched from political reality by, by the insulation that electoral success gives her. Quite how Liz Truss could have ended up so low so fast is still actually baffling me. And then even the Daily Star cost of loathing crisis. Couples who split up are having to continue living together because they can't afford places of their own. So a nod, even from the Daily Star. It's a good story, that, actually. We might do that tomorrow. Uh, a nod, even from the Daily Star, towards the economic problems that are engulfing the country, some of which would be there whoever was in Downing Street. Don't ever allow your pendulum to swing so far in the other direction that it, too, becomes uh, unattached from sensible observation. Some of these problems would still be here, whoever was in Downing Street, whether it was Margaret Thatcher or Gordon Brown. But my God, they're bigger than they would have been without Causey Quarting's a, a, a diabolical intervention and the response of the markets. You want to pick a low point? Probably Jacob Rees-Mogg yesterday, trying to argue that the reaction to the mini-budget had nothing to do with the mini-budget. I know we are fairly tireless chroniclers of... Jacob Rees-Mogg's moral corruption and intellectual vapidity, but that was a true milestone in his appalling contributions to public discourse in this country, trying to argue that the response to the mini-budget had nothing to do with the mini-budget. As we mentioned yesterday, it's like trying to argue that the bruising around your eye has nothing to do with the punch in the face that you received yesterday. But hey-ho, Jacob's going to Jacob.